Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and this time we're going to be talking about list building in 3rd edition Age of Sigmar. We just got our core rules released, and we've had some additional rules teased out for us uh, by Games Workshop, so we have a pretty good idea of how we're going to be building lists going forward. So, um, things are definitely going to be different. And I wanted to get out there in front of everybody and talk about it and see what uh, what we got going on. First of all, I want everybody to not freak out. A lot of people freak out about change, and all of this is is just uh, some changes to how you're going to be putting your army together. And for a lot of people, it's actually not going to really change their list. It might change some of the effects of their list. For some people, it might change it a lot. But just because it's a change doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, I think a lot of these changes are really good. I'm a big fan of all of these changes, and um, I can't wait to get out and get some games. So, there's changes to the basic rules of how you construct an army there's a lot of new incentives and disincentives to guide your list building there's new constraints on list building as well um, many armies are going to be way different but not all armies are going to be uh, all that different at all so that that's the basic overview here are the big points that are going to be guiding the changes in list building. Reinforcement points, that is our big change to our army composition. Coherency rules, that is, um, you know, changes to how we're going to put our units together to be most effective. Um, changes to battalions and uh, turn priority and all of those sorts of things. Um, enhancements, which we'll talk about more in deal detail what exactly enhancements are. Uh, heroic actions and monstrous rampages. Um, all of our restrictions on different buffs that we can give to our army. And command points and command abilities in the new edition. Now, some of this is going to kind of gloss over the specifics of the rules. I'm kind of assuming that you've already read the rules or have seen most of the articles, gotten a pretty good impression of how things are. Um, I'm not doing a deep dive on the rules in general. I'm really just looking at this from a perspective of how your army building is going to change. So up first, reinforcement points. In a 2,000 point game, you get four reinforcement points to play with. Um, any unit that is more than minimum size um, costs a reinforcement points. Double the minimum unit size costs one reinforcement point. Three times the minimum unit size costs two reinforcement points, and only battle line units can be reinforced twice. Very important to note there. So our units in general are going to be smaller. A lot of these units are going to be capped um, at a smaller size. Now, to be fair, a lot of these units are not actually going to change compared to how we played them previously. Some units, um, like a good example is Hearthguard Berserkers, previously were commonly played as 20s. Um, barring any other changes, it looks like they're going to be limited to 15 now. Um, so that's definitely a change for Fire Slayers players. Um, no units can be reinforced more than twice. I fully expect there to be battle tomes in the future that... Um, supersede that rule uh, maximum unit size for many units are going to be different um, you know previously your demi griffs could go up to I believe 12 now they're going to be limited to 9 so that is definitely another important change 
So it, this is really doing a lot of restricting of your ability to have larger units on the battlefield. So what does that mean? It's going to be a lot more uh, multiple small units slash minimum size units, whichever uh, MSU acronym you uh, choose to define it as. But in general, more small units and a greater quantity of units to make up for that. Coherency changes. Um, so units of two to five have no changes to coherency. Um, units of six or more, the models all have to be within an inch of other mod of two other models in the unit. I have a typo in my slide. I apologize. Um, so six or more models, you have to be each model within one inch of two other models in the unit. So this is preventing conga lines, preventing long strung out units, weird pile-ins where you're just snaking around the outside of a unit. Um, that's definitely uh, a very big thing here. It's gonna be dependent on the unit size and base size, how much of this is actually going to impact you. Um, things that are say, the more elite infantry that comes in units of three, you know, that very frequently people were taking six. Um, now that puts them into an awkward position where now you're into that six plus range. So everybody needs to be within two inches. I'm sorry, within an inch of two other models from the unit, which um, becomes quite awkward. You might end up with being like four wide with two in the back to cover uh, everybody being within an inch of two other models. 25 millimeter bases. Um, 25 millimeters is slightly less than one inch. So base to base contact still creates coherency for those models. You can just string them out in a line as long as all the bases are touching. Um, that's one of the odd little exceptions to all of this. So 25 millimeter bases actually don't really change a lot in how they function other than them not being able to be as spread out they're going to be a little bit more condensed uh 32 millimeter bases or larger are going to be pretty severely impacted by this you're going to probably get less models into combat and more models that are behind your combat line that are not able to reach over and make attacks um and as I mentioned before, units with minimum size of three to five, are they're likely going to uh, be minimum size very frequently. Um, the thing that I've been sort of batting around with like Putrid Blight Kings, I think it may actually make more sense to, rather than running a unit of 10 for a larger unit, running a unit of 15, so you get a higher percentage of the um, total models on the front line and you're already sort of having that expectation of not getting them all into combat anyway. So that is that there. Battalions. Uh, battalions are completely changing. Uh, no more War Scroll battalions in match play. They're being replaced by core battalions. Um, your first turn priority in the general's handbook we've been told is the same as uh it currently is for second edition where the player that completes deployment first goes first or has uh initiative for the first turn um otherwise uh it is now a roll off and uh if you drop first you break ties in general, battalions are no longer a one drop. They are um, just groups of units that go together. And there are battalions that are going to be out there. Like one of the abilities is one drop, but that battalion does nothing else besides one drop. Um, battalions are no longer automatically giving you extra command points and artifacts. Um, 
they each battalion gives you a specific ability, but they're all fairly generic. Um, you can get uh, an extra command point once per game. You can make your battalion a one drop. You can get uh, you know one particular command ability for free once per game. Um, or you can get a free enhancement once per game. Or, I'm sorry, it, free enhancement, it's not once per game, it's just uh, in your army list construction. And we'll talk about enhancements more in a minute. Um, so all the current info that we have says that these don't cost points. These are just um, guides for army construction and ways to get additional bonuses for building your army in a certain way. Um there's a pretty level playing field here uh, because of everybody getting the same ones um, and the benefits that it gives you aren't really disproportionately affecting one army more than another most of the time. Um, most of these are including at least one hero and that is something important to note. Um, You'll notice a pattern here of heroes being more important and more prevalent than they previously have been. Um, and uh, most of these uh, battalions, are their special abilities only apply to units in that battalion, um, other than um, the free enhancement one that is just sort of an army-wide ability. So speaking of enhancements, so here's the lowdown on this. You automatically get one enhancement of each type for free. Core battalions can grant you more of these. You can use the same core battalion more than once, so you can stack them up and get extra. So what are the different enhancements that you can get? Command traits, artifacts, additional spells, and the additional spells are for every wizard in your army getting an additional spell they know from a spell lore. Um, triumphs and any other army special abilities like mount traits, for example. Most of this is impacting heroes. Um, Triumphs have changed in this edition, so um, everybody is starting with a triumph, no matter what, and um, they're a they're definitely different than the previous ones. I think the only one that sa stayed the same is reroll saves. Um, you know, being able to get more artifacts is really powerful. Being able to get an additional spell for all of the wizards in your army can be incredibly powerful if you have a good spell lore. Um, I'm looking at you, Skaven. The uh, Skaven spell lore is really good for Grey Seers, and very often it's a hard decision to pick just one of those spells to give to your wizards. Now you get to pick two, potentially, if you're using a core battalion that gives you more. So, overall, um, very positive on this, and I like it a lot. This is a, a cool way to get additional buffs into your army based on your army composition. Uh, that's something else that I didn't note about the battalions. Each one has a unique composition with minimum and maximum sizes to it. Um, the one that gives you extra enhancements is actually pretty easy to meet. So, uh, you know, looking at a fairly basic list, you could probably get like four extra enhancements with uh, using that core battalion more than once. So that is pretty big. Moving right along here. Heroic actions and monstrous rampages. All of these can be activated on each player turn. Uh, Heroic actions happen in the hero phase. You can roll for uh, an additional command point. On a four up, you get the command point. If your general is dead, then it changes to a two up. Um, 
you can have a hero act as a wizard for purposes of dispelling and unbinding uh, for that turn. You can give them plus one to wound and save uh, once per game. And you do also have an ability to roll to heal. Um, you roll 2d6, and if you roll under your bravery, you heal d3. Monstrous Rampages, these happen at the end of the charge phase. Uh, you can prevent uh, the enemy unit from receiving commands. Um, you can deal mortal wounds to them. You can get plus one to hit uh, versus monsters, which is pretty fun. You know, when you have two monsters running up against each other, uh, you can bu buff them both to have a big all-out brawl. And a really important one here is that monsters can destroy faction terrain rules. The terrain still stays on the table. It just loses all of its rules. It doesn't function anymore as a, ter uh, you know, a faction terrain piece. So this is overall, like, these are free abilities. So this is just incentivizing monsters and heroes, and particularly heroes that are also monsters. So really good here. Um... Again, noticing the pattern of heroes being really important. They were not joking when they said that heroes are more heroic. And we're going to see real soon just how heroic they can get. So we have some restrictions on how many buffs a unit can get. Hit and wound buff and debuff is limited to plus one or minus one, but that is net of all different abilities. So if I have an ability giving me plus one to hit and you have abilities giving me minus two to hit, I'm net minus one. So although I have two minus one effects, both of them work because I got a plus one in there as well. So the net is only one. This prevents, um, you know, making somebody hit on sixes with multiple debuffs. Um, it makes it so like your additional buffs or debuffs uh, negate what your opponent's effects do. Save rolls are similarly restricted, but they're only restricted on the upside. You can only get plus one to save. Um, however, the same rule applies that that is net. So you can add additional save modifiers to negate rend and other uh, minus one to save abilities. Um, units can only receive one command per phase. And heroes can only use one command per phase. Uh, and the other note here that I didn't include in the slide is that if you have multiple heroes with the same command ability, they cannot use the same command more than once. Um, and that also is inclusive of all of the generic command abilities. So each command ability can only be used once per phase. That is important for some of them, which can be used in multiple different phases. All right, command points and command abilities. First of all, we're getting more command points each turn. If you're going first in the battle round, you get one command point, two if you go second. In each player turn, each player gets one command point for their general. You can use a heroic action to roll to try and get an additional one, and there are battalions that will give you more command points. We have new generic command abilities. There are now seven generics in total. Inspiring Presence does the same as it ever did, all Out Attack is now plus one to hit for the phase, and that can be used either in shooting or in melee. All Out Defense is now plus one to save. That, again, also can be used in shooting or melee. Unleash Hell, this is basically a charge response. If an enemy unit ends a charge within nine units, I'm sorry, within nine inches of... Um, a unit with a missile attack, that unit can shoot at the unit that charged. 
uh, rally lets you uh, roll a d6 in your hero phase for each model in a unit that has been slain and on every six you return a slain model to the unit at the double is very similar to the old at the double rule you run six automatically the only difference is now that it is not a response you have to declare that you're using this before you roll to run uh, redeploy if a unit an enemy unit ends a move within nine inches of one of your units. You can redeploy and roll a d6 and move that many inches um, in response to that enemy unit getting close to you. And forward to victory, still the same, lets you reroll charges. Um, generic commands can also be executed by unit champions. They haven't exactly defined what a unit champion is, but I think as a general rule, it's going to be whatever is defined as the leader of a particular unit. Um, it's just new language that they haven't used before. So um, I'm sure we'll get an FAQ clarification on that. But for now, I, that's a pretty safe assumption to go with. Like if a unit has some type of leader, they are considered the unit champion and they can use uh, generic command abilities. So our summary on incentives and disincentives. Coherency in battalions are really encouraging minimum size units. Um, composition rules are limiting units from getting too big. Um, so we're really being encouraged to use many small units rather than um, big blobs as much as we used to. There are certainly armies that are still going to be able to create big blobs like, you know, Skaven and Gloom Spite Gits, um, Slaves to Darkness with uh, Chaos Marauders. There's definitely um, some different possibilities in there. More heroes are definitely good. Um, more uh, opportunity to execute command abilities. More command points are available to you in general. Battalions are very frequently including a hero. Um, monstrous rampages and some battalion abilities are also encouraging more monsters. And your free battalions are going to be guiding you in your army composition and what extra bonuses you're looking for. So we have a lot of things that are, they're not exactly on rails, but they are guiding us in particular directions that uh, we didn't really have that much guidance on before. You know, it, I think especially with the addition of more command points per turn, we're going to see a much higher density of heroes and um you know the unit coherency battalions and composition rules those are really going to reduce unit sizes we're going to see a lot more units on the battlefield in general i think so i think that is about it for now Thank you for watching as always. Don't forget to like and subscribe, turn on your notifications, support us on Patreon, and come hang out with us on Facebook and Twitter. All of the social links will be down in the description below, and I will talk to you all later.